If you clicked on this video, then you're just as excited as I am to learn about these weird ice balls that cover some beaches. So in this video, I will explain what this phenomenon is, where it occurs, how it happens, in other words, how these balls form, and why they happen, in other words, what types of environments induce this kind of ice ball formation, and lastly, why these are so rare. So first off, where is this happening? Well, the picture that I have in the thumbnail is from the Finnish island of Hailuoto. They range from egg to football size and cover, as you can see, a really large area of the beach. But they're also found in a few other regions of the world, such as the Visa estuary on the coast of the North Sea in Germany, like Michigan in the US, the far east of Russia, the Gulf of Ob in Siberia. The Siberian ones also have been seen to get up to a meter in diameter, which is insane. So all of these are really cool. There might be some other places, but this is just what the references I used mentioned. And of course, the references I'm using for this video will all be linked in my description box below. But these are the general regions where these ice balls occur. So why have they occurred in these regions? What is causing them to form? Well, the first ideas about how these ice balls form were either hail of abnormal size, leftovers from an epic snowball fight, that's my favorite, and or bowling mermaids, which I think some of these were just a joke, but you know, it was really mysterious at the beginning. So we had to do some investigating. In order to investigate, some scientists have cut into these balls to see what answers they hold inside. Typically, these ice balls contain two main layers, a core of clear ice or frozen slush that has relatively porous uh, ice platelets in some cases, and an outer shell of sediment-rich solid ice, so kind of dirtier ice. The outer shell density is closer to that of ice without any significant pore space, unlike the, the core in some of these balls that they tested. And the ice balls that they tested are from the Visa estuary in Germany, so this is just from that site, but in general, we could probably assume that the other ice balls in the other localities are relatively similar. They also found that the balls are near spherical with smooth but irregular surfaces. Their salinity content is near zero throughout the entire interior and exterior of the ball. However, the sediment content strongly varies depending on the layer. As I mentioned before, the outer layer consists of sediment and the sediment it has is mostly fine sand with no clay content, but fine gravel and some small organic remains can also be present in some of the balls. But the ice balls themselves aren't the only things that the scientists look at to gain information about how they form. They all also look at the environment, which obviously induced their formation somehow. So in this Visa estuary, for example, these ice balls were observed on January 7th, 2003. So when they look at the environment in which these ice balls formed, they see strong tidal influence. The tidal range on that beach is around five meters. So that's the range between low tide and high tide. So that's a big tidal range from low to high tide. And there's really low surface water salinity, which would be more conducive to the ice ball formation because they don't incorporate salt. And when they looked at records of what had happened leading up to January 7th, when the ice balls were observed, they saw that after a cold period, temperature rose abruptly on the 5th of January from around negative 8 degrees Celsius to around 0 degrees Celsius. There's supposed to be a negative sign there, my bad. And then it rapidly cooled again. They also found that a spring tide occurred the morning of January 6th. And the ice balls were found on January 7th on the uppermost tidal ice terrace. So every time the tide rose to a certain level, it deposits ice and the uppermost tidal ice terrace would be the one where the highest tide was. And so that would have moved the ice and ice balls up to the uppermost terrace. And the spring tide is a really high tide. So it would have moved the ice balls then um, during the morning of the 6th. And they measured the water to see the water temperature and it seemed to be very close to but slightly above freezing temperature. So from all of this information, they came up with a story of how their ice balls formed, and they were able to say that they likely formed the night of the 5th leading into the morning of the 6th. So like, why did they conclude this and how exactly did their formation work? 
Well, they suggest that the beach surface cooled to below freezing during the low tide. So when the tide was at the lowest, the beach surface became really cold. And then when the rising water level covered that flattish, low-sloped beach with a layer of water only a few centimeters thick, the water, because it was in contact with a really cold beach, froze and formed ice platelets. And then the rise of the water further caused those ice platelets to form slush, ice slush. Snow precipitation, which was also recorded to have occurred during that night and morning that the ice falls were forming, likely increased the amount of slush available for eventual ice ball formation. Waves then moved the slush to form porous slush balls. Wow, that's hard to say. <laughs> and moved them up the beach with increased water level each time the water rose. At the highest tide, the slush balls became stationary and deposited on the beach and then cooled to air temperature. They also found that larger waves, which in the case of the Visa estuary were produced by ship traffic on the morning of the 6th, activated a second stage of formation, which caused the formation of the outer shells of the ice balls. Because the larger waves were mixing up sand and sediment into the water, and that water then moved the balls back and forth, the water partially flushed the lower parts of the balls and deposited sand in them. This led to the abundance of sediment in the outer shell. However, I do want to emphasize again that this formation mechanism was just proposed by the scientists that studied the ice balls at the Visa estuary and the environment of that estuary and beach region. And so the other regions where ice balls occur could have a formation mechanism slightly different, but probably very similar. It's just that this was really the only scientific article I could find on their formation. I did, however, find a CNN article that suggested a slightly different formation mechanism. They suggest that these ice balls form when turbulent water at the shore breaks up a layer of slushy ice. So, so far, it's relatively the same as what these other scientists suggested. And then the layers of slush stick together and build on each other in near freezing to freezing water. So again, the same as what was suggested before, but they suggest the waves cause the ice to spin in place, which smooths them into balls. So that's a little different than the previous formation mechanism we talked about. Um, instead of swashing the balls back and forth to smooth them, it spins them, which is also possible. So I'll link that article down below for you as well. And so yeah, now we know how these crazy, weird, mysterious ice balls formed, where they form, and the types of environments that are conducive to their formation. But why are they so rare? It just really takes like a cold, icy beach. Well, temperature several degrees below freezing is the number one requirement, or at least a, a cooling period at low tide is, is a requirement. And then a freshwater system, a large tidal range, and a shallow beach slope so that it can be relatively flat for the movement and the rolling of the balls is also very important. So there's a few you know, required conditions that have to be met all at once. And to me, if we look at the differences and similarities between these ice balls and a type of sediment called ooids, we can see why these ice balls would be more rare than something like ooids. For example, ooids are also formed by accretion via continual wave action. Ooids are just calcium carbonate coated grains, and they form in warm, shallow water, sunny environments where calcium carbonate is ready to precipitate from the water and saturated in the water so it can precipitate very easily. And as these grains roll back and forth because of wave action, they get coated in calcium carbonate. And this creates these really smooth, beautiful carbonate balls like shown down here to the left. However, there's differences between these ice balls formation and their requirements for environmental conditions to form compared to ooids. Ooids are calcium carbonate, like I just mentioned, and form in warm carbonate saturated water, whereas ice balls are water, H2O, formed in a narrow temperature range with specific dynamic environmental requirements. So the waves, the tides, those physical dynamics, as well as, you know, temperature and kind of chemical dynamics. In other words, ooids won't melt <laughs> per se. They can dissolve in the water if pH changes drastically, but that's not something that would happen quite as rapidly as, for example, a few degrees of temperature variation, which could occur rapidly and rapidly melt any newly forming ice balls. And so temperature variation are really the main limiting factor for ice balls, you know, being somewhat rare. 
So that is all the information I can find about these crazy weird ice balls. I mean, they're very, very cool to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning about them as much as I did. And if you'd like to check out my everything you could ever want to know about ice video, I'll link it up here. And if you want to check out the references I used to make this video that talk about how these ice balls formed and investigated their insides and all of that, I will link all of those references down below for you in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.